authoritarian movements the world over and throughout history always stomp on reproductive rights. In some cases, they mandate forced abortions, like in China. More often, like with the Law and Justice Party in Poland, it's an abortion ban, right? In, in either case, you get the point. Reproductive freedom cannot be tolerated. Heaven forbid a woman decides on her own whether or not she wants to have a baby. It's a government decision to force you to give birth or not, regardless of what you want or what's good for you. It is an authoritarian project everywhere there is authoritarian governance. In, in Vichy, France, when France was occupied by the Nazis and controlled by the Vichy collaborationist regime, Vichy authorities in France took the time, you think they might have other stuff to worry about, they took the time in July 1943 to guillotine a woman, to execute a woman by guillotine in 1943 for the crime of performing abortions. Abortion was not just illegal, it was punishable by the death penalty when France was occupied by the Nazis. That law was only dropped when France was liberated by the Allies. Germany itself only last year repealed a Nazi-era law that banned German doctors from providing information about abortions. They finally got rid of that last year. In fascist Italy, abortion had already been against the law before he came to power, but when Mussolini became the fascist dictator of Italy, he aggressively criminalized it. He made any woman who got an abortion subject to five years at hard labor. Now, heaven forbid that a woman be free to decide on her own terms if she wants to have a baby. In the Trump presidency, Republicans finally succeeded in their machinations to stack the U.S. Supreme Court with hardline anti-abortion conservatives, and then they were able to get through the policy they most wanted. They overturned Roe versus Wade, and that allowed Republican-controlled states all over the country to ban abortion. And even those bans have not been enough for Republicans in, in many states. Republicans are now proposing in the state of Missouri, for example, that abortion be charged as homicide, that abortion be charged criminally as murder. Republicans in the Missouri House and the Missouri Senate are now proposing murder charges for abortion in legislation that they are bringing up this month. This comes after Republicans have proposed similar legislation in Kentucky, and in Georgia, and in Arkansas, and in South Carolina, and in Colorado. Republicans in all of those states have proposed murder charges for abortion, which usually, of course, means life in prison or even the possibility of capital punishment. In Ohio, a young woman is newly facing criminal charges for having had a miscarriage at home bringing criminal charges against her, threatening her with prison for the handling of the fetal remains after she miscarried at home. And in Texas, the case of 31-year-old Kate Cox has played out over these last few days as a Republican fantasy of how they would most like to wield really, 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 really big government. Kate Cox is a mother of two. She's 31 years old. She very much has wanted a third child. She was pregnant with that third child when she learned that it would not be a viable pregnancy, a fatal genetic abnormality. She had already been in and out of the hospital with fairly serious complications in this pregnancy. Her doctor advised her that if she wants to be able to try again, if she and her husband want to try to get pregnant again to try for another child, which they desperately want, this non-viable pregnancy must be ended by abortion in order to protect her health and potentially to save her life. But Texas bans abortion, because Texas is a Republican-controlled state. So Kate Cox had to go to court to try to get an exception from Texas's abortion ban. And a Texas judge ruled late last week that she could have an exception from the abortion ban. She could get this abortion in this special case to preserve her health, to potentially preserve her own life. The Texas Republican Attorney General responded by writing to, to Kate Cox's doctor and to the Texas hospitals where the doctor has admitting privileges, Texas Attorney General threatening that he would potentially criminally prosecute them if they did the abortion regardless of that Texas court ruling. He then filed an appeal with the Texas Supreme Court. The Texas Supreme Court only has Republican judges on it. And that all Republican Supreme Court in Texas promptly agreed to hear the appeal that stayed the lower court ruling. Practical effect of that is that Kate Cox was once again legally blocked from being able to get an abortion in Texas. And then the Supreme Court just sat on it. 
did nothing. They blocked the ruling allowing her abortion on Friday, and then they just sat on it all weekend and today. Who knows when they would have got around to finally making some sort of decision about it. She's already 20 weeks pregnant, right? She's been in and out of the emergency room at least four times with complications from this pregnancy, but no rush, guys. Today, Ms. Cox's legal counsel, the Center for Reproductive Rights, announced that Ms. Cox finally was effectively forced to flee. She left the state to go to some safer place where there isn't a ban like this one that Republicans have imposed in Texas. Nancy Northup, the chief executive of the Center for Reproductive Rights, which has been representing Ms. Cox in this case, said this. She said, quote, Kate desperately wanted to be able to get care where she lives and recover at home surrounded by family. While Kate had the ability to leave the state, most people do not. And a situation like this could be a death sentence. That was this afternoon. And now tonight, hours after that announcement from the Center for Reproductive Rights, hours after we learned that Kate Cox had to leave the state of Texas so she could get this abortion somewhere else, tonight, the Texas Supreme Court has nevertheless just issued its ruling in this case. They ruled that the lower court was wrong to give Kate Cox an exception to the ban. They ruled that Kate Cox effectively should have been forced by the government of the state of Texas to carry this pregnancy to term of a baby that would not live, despite the fact that doing so would risk her health, would risk her ability to ever have a child again, and would potentially, potentially even risk her death. A government would compel that of her and her body while the Republican Attorney General threatened criminal prosecution of anyone who helped her in a state where the penalty for helping a woman in this circumstance is up to 99 years in prison. Because, you know, limited government, freedom. Joining us now is Nancy Norfolk, President.